Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show, and I thought I'd start today's episode with an unboxing, because this is a rather special unboxing. Uh, inside is a Swatch watch, and I haven't had a Swatch since uh, my early teens, so we're talking, wow, f over, over 15 years ago, so I haven't had a Swatch for over 15 years. I was really deeply inspired by that amazing Swatch collection. I reviewed on my good friend Federico's channel. Check it out if you haven't seen it. It was a phenomenal collection. And for me, swatches are something quite special. Uh, they remind me of um, a time, an era, so to speak, of my youth. And they really got me excited about um, about watches and, and the different kind of styles and possibilities and then the fun you could have with relatively affordable watches. So, without further ado, let's um, get the old leak into action and open her up. There it is, Swatch. That very simple plastic case. So, what Swatch did I go for? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Look at that. All black with a see-through it's obviously the quartz i didn't go for the um system 51 because i wanted something a little bit more affordable and i just saw this design oh, and i loved it oh it matches the knife just take the plastic off oh look at that now instantly it's a lot bigger than the swatches of my youth so pair it to my little tissot there which is 37 wow it's a big one it's gorgeous. Oh, I just love those colours. I love the colours with the black. Very simple quartz. Very, very elegant. Really cool. And I think I paid just over 50 bucks. God, the, even the smell reminds me <laughs> of, ch of childhood. Fantastic. Right, let's quick wrist shot. Very quick. There we go. Nice and slender. That's, oh, that's so fun. That is fun. Very comfortable, very light. Little sign buckle. Ah, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. That really is cool, isn't it? Ah, oh, that domed uh, crystal there. I'll do a full review uh, soon. Anyway, guys, what a way to start a show, eh? What a way to start a show. Really fun little piece. Just over 50 bucks. I mean, can you put a price on the happiness that this is going to bring me? Oh, the nostalgia. True Proustian Madeleine moment. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop drooling. Let's uh, roll the intro and get on with today's show. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to today's show. Today, we are gonna be doing a response to a fantastic comment, a question rather, I got the other day from a viewer in one of the videos. Now, I do realize as the channel grows, it's gonna get more and more difficult to respond to all of your comments, but I do read them. I try and religiously spend about two hours every single day sitting down, just two hours straight, replying to as many comments as I can. But please do realize, you know, it's <laughs> it's getting difficult now, but I do read your comments and uh, I really do make an effort to get back to as many of you as possible. Now this person wanted chronographs, suggestions for chronographs, automatic or mechanical for under $2,000. So I thought, what an excellent idea for a video. So that's what I thought I'd do today. And I came up with some really, I, I liked it because it was a bit of a challenge. Um, so I came up with some pretty interesting um, suggestions. Some of them obvious, others a little bit kind of out of the bit, off the beaten track, so to speak. Uh, but please, guys, if you have your own, don't forget to um, nominate them down below in the comments. 
So without, oh my God, I haven't even done wristwatch check. Well, actually I'm wearing my little Tissot Janeiro because this is an excellent example of an amazing chronograph you can get for under $2,000. So I'll get back to this particular one in a moment, but I, I had to wear it for this video. Right now I'm wearing it on my lucky, uh, this is my one piece uh, Zulu strap. I've had this for absolutely donkeys, this, uh, this strap. I have no idea where it's from, but just suits that 1930s kind of military look of the uh, little Le Genera, my little Tissot Genera. I absolutely adore this piece. Mwah! Oh, I'm so happy it's back. Anyway, uh, wristwatch check done. Let's get on with the video because I want to keep this as short as possible. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on all of these chronographs because, uh, to be honest, we could talk about them forever. But I just wanted to bring these to your attention. So, I haven't in ordered them in it order preference it's just for for order of reference rather we'll start off at number 10 and this is probably the most iconic of the lot and that's got to be the young hands max bill chronoscope uh, a lot of you have been requesting this for uh, review and quite rightly so the only reason i haven't really done a review of the, the max bill is because i do have a friend that owns this particular chronograph back in London. Every time I go back, I keep meaning to review it and it will happen. There's a ton of Bauhaus inspired designed watches, but what Young Hands has that the rest of them don't is that this was actually a, a collaboration between Max Bill, the famed German artist who I absolutely adore as well. His work is incredible. So this is a collaboration between Young Hands, the German watchmaker, and of course, Max Bill. So already, you know, the, the icon is born, right? You can get various versions of this, but the chronograph is beautiful, absolutely stunning. Typical in that Bauhaus fashion, you know, where form is dictated by function. It's, it's very clean. It's stripped of any kind of ostentatious ornate design. It's, it's very, very Bauhaus. Uh, I love Bauhaus, as you guys know. In fact, I do own a Young Hands, but a clock. If you remember back at Christmas, I bought a, a real Bauhaus from about the turn of, uh, about from the 1920s and 30s, a real Bauhaus uh, original uh, Young Hands. I, I do collect clocks as well. So based on the 7750, the Valjoux 7750, this retails at about 1800, huge dial, never ending dial there. You can get this in, a, uh, I think in a black dial or uh, the white dial. There is, I believe there's a gray dial now. I think a newer version of the gray dial. I might be wrong about that. Very classic, tastefully done, beautiful, beautiful watch. I love Young Hands. They're a quality German uh, watchmaker with some absolutely stunning pieces, 40 millimeter in size so really fits a lot of people for a chronograph it's very dressy indeed and it's an icon it is an icon so definitely the max bill chronoscope uh, has to be in the list okay so moving on my second in the list has got to be another iconic german brand and that is the zinn 103 st and this is a flieger style chronograph i absolutely adore zinn uh, they really are a great brand, relatively new in the whole scheme of things, started in the 60s, but their quality, their designs, are they really set themselves apart. Again, we have a modified 7750 movement in there. It's pretty much the entry-level Zinn uh, chronograph, again coming in at $1,800. Uh, you can order these from watch buyers, as, uh, as with the uh, Young Hands. Immediately, you'll see that Flieger aviation influence, but it does have an uncanny resemblance to the Breguet Type 20 from the 60s. Um, I absolutely adore this look and this layout. It's a high contrast dial. It's got this beautiful domed acrylic uh, crystal. And you can actually get the this particular one a little bit cheaper on a strap. I think it's about 1600 uh, with a strap. So it's an entry level Zinn, you're not going to get all that special technology that they're so famous for. But it's a Zinn all the same, it's a chronograph, you've got day date as well. What more can you ask really for $1,600? I think it's a terrific buy. Okay, moving on to my number eight, and that's got to be the Oris Arctics GT chronograph. Again, automatic, and I should have said the uh, Young Hands 
and the uh, Zin were both automatic, by the way. So another automatic, again with the same value 7750. And you're, you're gonna see this as a reoccurring theme here because this really is the standard movement at this price range and beyond. So this is a heavily racing inspired, beautiful chronograph. It is big at about 44 millimeters. I had the date uh, without the chronograph uh, much, much smaller. What I love about the Arctics line from uh, Oris is that they're very, very contemporary, modern look to them. You've got a bezel there. I believe it is ceramic. The colors they use, uh, black and white with the dash of red, very, very kind of racing. What I love is about this particular one is the subdial for the 60 seconds is a little kind of graph that fills up a little bit like a, a fuel gauge. I, I just, it's a nice touch, it really is a nice touch. I love Oris, as you guys know. Uh, now this is at about the $1,700 mark on the gray market. Retail is a lot more, obviously, you know, 48 hour power reserve. It is modified. They've added the display back with that lovely red rotor that Oris is so famous for. Beautiful, beautiful watch. And I think it doesn't really get enough attention. And a lot of these watches don't get enough attention. This particular version at 1700 comes on a rubber strap. So it keeps that modern aesthetic going. It's just gorgeous. Fantastic Swiss brand. You guys know I'm besotted with uh, Oris. And I can't recommend them enough. Okay, moving on. Now, this is a really interesting choice at number seven. And, you know, we, we've... Basically, so far, it's all been Valju 7750s, but this is the first with a column wheel chronograph, and this is, of course, the Longines Heritage column wheel chronograph. Immediately, you'll see it's retro 60s, kind of mid-century styling, absolutely gorgeous, little 39 millimeter. This is the Longines Caliber 688, which is a modified Valju 7750, but instead of the regular um, cam and clutch that we're used to. They've actually modified it with a, uh, they've added a column wheel, which is just amazing considering its price. You don't really tend to see column wheels in chronographs, especially a Swiss made one under 2000. It's, it's usually associated with the higher end chronographs. So this is something very, very special here. It's a great size. It's got that pandered look to it. Those beautiful alpha sword, pointed hands. Longines is a brand that we're going to actually cover next month. Uh, the patrons have voted on uh, on this brand for me to cover and I will be covering it. It's a brand with an impressive history, somewhat kind of been overshadowed by the big boys recently, but back in the day it was highly regarded and um, they got some beautiful, beautiful watches. Staying with Longines, at number six, another suggestion from Longines, and this is another from their heritage. This is an automatic, this time with just the standard 7750, the Heritage L274-74924. You can get this in a panda dial or a completely black dial. A little bit big at 40 millimeters. It's got this look to it that you, you just want to jump in a Spitfire when you look at this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous, very tastefully done. I really like the silver dial version with the black sub dials it's got the day date complication and you can get this at a steal at thirteen hundred dollars on the gray market oh and uh, I, sh I neglected to mention the column wheel chronograph is at 1750 on the gray market so again swiss made automatic uh, beautiful beautiful tasteful design it comes on a strap i think it's extremely elegant an amazing price I really do, I really do like this watch. I almost came this close to buying one of these myself. I love the all black dial version. Although to be honest, I'd, I'd take any of them. So moving on, number five, we had to put it in. It is of course, probably the most iconic of the lot, the Omega Speedmaster Reduced. Now you guys know I've owned several of these. Um, in fact, I'm contemplating buying another one. It's the little brother, the little automatic version of the hugely iconic manual wind racing watch that went to uh, the moon. Basically the automatic version of one of the most iconic watches of all time. It's a little bit smaller at 39 millimeters. You get a ton of variations. There's a gold version, there's a polar dial version, 
with a white dial. There's even a blue and a red version, the uh, Schumacher Special Editions, which seriously, I'm this close to buying one myself. Uh, there's the two-tone, there's the racing, the more contemporary racing ones that are from more recent years. And then, of course, there's the women's version. Inside, we have the Omega Caliber 3220, which is based on the ETA 2890A2, which is the no date, obviously. I swear by them. I absolutely adore them. I miss mine immensely. I'm not gonna lie, I'm in the process of probably buying one back. They are just such bang per buck under the $2,000 mark. They are creeping up, but you can get them from about 1,500 14 to 2000 and beyond. Better condition they are, the more it's gonna cost, obviously. And if you want a new one, it's gonna cost more than $2,000. But I had to include it in there. It's a true icon. Yeah, okay, it's not the one that went into space, but I mean, <laughs> who of us is actually gonna own one that actually went into space? It's very tastefully done. And if you've got a smaller wrist like mine, but the man on the moon is too big, this is the way to go. One of the best bang per buck luxury timepieces ever. And I, I adore them. Is that number five or number four? I can't. Oh, sorry, that was number four. Moving on, number three, the Oris Aquis Chronograph. Again, Oris, we don't have to go into it, but this is actually over the $2,000 mark. This is about 2,200 on the gray market, maybe even a little bit more, but I had to put it in because we all love the Oris Aquis. This is the chronograph version, extremely masculine, tough looking design. I love the chronograph, it's, it's highly overlooked. Some may disagree, but how they incorporated the chronograph into the Aquis uh, look it is really, really cool. Very bold, modern, contemporary, completely its own thing. And you know, it's great to have a diver in here, a, a chronograph diver. Inside again, we have the ETA 7750, which is the Oris 674. Uh, but Oris do a great job mo uh, modifying it. I think they've boosted the uh, power reserve to about 48 hours. They add the, a red row to all the rest of it. This is a big one. This is about 46 millimeters, so definitely too big for me. But it's gorgeous. I, I love the, um, the, especially the grey dial version. It's uh, 500 meter water resistant, which for a chronograph is phenomenal. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And I think definitely worth, if you can spend two grand, putting a few more hundred dollars into it, it's a great, great watch you can be proud of. Comes on a, a rubber strap, so perfect for diving. Okay, my last two, and I had to include some Hamiltons in there because I think they really do have some of the best bang per buck chronographs out there, sub $2,000, even sub, uh, almost sub thousand dollars if you get it used on the gray market. Number two has got to be the Hamilton X-Wind. This is a very hugely aviation inspired watch. Uh, when you look at it you think of the Navi timer but it's got its own characteristic. We have the Caliber H21 which is the 7750 of course. Hamilton have done a fantastic job modifying it. Um, they've actually boosted its power reserve all the way up to 60 hours. It's a big piece, 44 millimeters, in a rotating dial with a really cool little gauge at the 12 o'clock doing all kinds of uh, aviation uh, calculations. Uh, the inner rotating dial is uh, controlled by a second crown, I believe. Yeah, a second crown. You can pick these up for $1,000 in the gray market. Day-day complication. They're gorgeous, I love them. And Hamilton, as you know, are heritage brands, uh, originally from the US. Swiss made, of course, now. Sapphire glass, all the rest of it, everything you'd expect. So actually, that was my number three. I'm getting in confusion, but it doesn't matter. That was my number three, the X-Wing. Okay, number two, another Hamilton, and I've owned this watch twice. I almost rebought it for a third time, and it's gotta be the X-Patrol. This is a highly overlooked, fantastic chronograph. 42 millimeters, but even in my skinny wrist can get away with it. It is an aviation piece, and I do believe aviation pieces, you can wear them a little bigger. The, the H21 Hamilton modified 7750 inside, same as the X-Wind. What I love is you can get the Panda dial version, there's the black dial version, I had the black dial version, you can get it on a rubber strap 
which is extremely comfortable. It's a thick one, obviously. A lot of these are very thick because of the 7750. But I found even with my small wrist, it wore very, very well. Again, we have an inner rotating bezel, day-date complication, beautiful, beautiful detail in the dial. So hugely aviation inspired. And what I love is also the display back. They've done it in the shape of a, a propeller. So the blades are little sapphire glass windows, which are just gorgeous. And I think it's highly overlooked. You can pick these up for below a thousand dollars new on the gray market, which is just phenomenal. Uh, you know, you're getting a, a Valjoux 7750, but even better, bit of decoration in there, nothing amazing. But I think it is such a cool design. It stands out on its own. Fantastic alternative to a Navi timer if you can't afford a Navi timer. I think this is a watch you can be equally as proud of. I love, love Hamilton. They're a heritage brand and, you know, you see the Hamiltons. I think X-Wing and the X-Patrol have both been included in, I think it was a Die Hard movie. I might be wrong, but I know they've been included in, in movies. It's just a cool brand and a cool watch. Okay, so my number one, and it's no surprise, it's got to be the little Tissot Janeiro here. This is my second one now because I sold it, I had buy, uh, seller's remorse and I bought it back because it's so rare. Well, it's not that rare, it's, it's, it's limited edition to about 3,000. They're going up in value because they're getting hard to find in good condition. Based on the old 1930s Tissot designs that when they were collaborating with Le Magna and Omega, they did some amazing, beautiful chronographs. So they reissued it in, in the 90s. Uh, inside we have a very special 7760, modified uh, 7760, uh, which is basically the Valjoux 7750, but without the rotor, so it's a manual wind. They've even patinaed the date and the dial beautifully to make it really, I mean, it, at a first glance, it does look like the 30s, but the great thing is, because it's made from the, in the 90s, you know, you don't have, it's a little bit more robust. Uh, that 37 millimeter size is just so nostalgic. I, I love it, and you can see why I bought it back. When I first bought it, I bought it amazingly below, I think about $900 I paid for it. That I then sold it for about $1,200 only a month later. I bought this one back, I think I paid about $1,400. I, so <laughs> I, I had to put another $100 in. $200, I don't know how much it was. Trust me, if you can find these, the price is already going up. And for a little entry-level Swiss brand like Tissot, they are a solid investment. I didn't get it with the box. They come with this beautiful cigar-style special limited edition box with the kind of, um, I think, enamel wood thing. It's, it's quite luxurious. It's an amazing watch. It's COSC certified. You know, getting this movement, it's its partly decorated, beautiful little display back, COSC certified. You know, I, the fact that I spent under $1,000 on the first one, it's just phenomenal buying. I mean, I really kind of hit the jackpot with that, and I, I'm so stupid to have sold it, but I'm glad to have it back. It was worth putting that extra couple of hundred dollars to buy it back, because it's something I think, uh, it's definitely a good investment and I just love wearing it. It's got such class, such um, style, such personality. And the fact is, is you're not gonna see another one of these. I mean, very, very unlikely, you know, so I love the fact it's so unique and so special. Anyway, I've, I've totally mucked up the order of these. That is my top 10 uh, chronographs for under $2,000. Please let me know of your suggestions down in the comments below. I'd love to hear more suggestions. Of course, there's gonna be a ton more, but I had to limit it down to ones that I personally like, brands that I respect. We've got even some iconic watches like the Young Hands and the Omega in there. So guys, please don't forget to add your suggestions down in the comments below. I really do appreciate all your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. It really does help me. So please don't forget to hit that like button. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.